Hi, in this video we are going to discuss about the long term regulation of blood pressure. So this has been asked as such in many university questions as a short essay. So we will see what how to approach this question in an exam. So the long term regulation is mainly the role of the kidneys. So the first mechanism by which kidneys tend to regulate BP is called pressure diuresis and pressure natriuresis. So what is pressure diuresis? So suppose there is an increase in BP, there will obviously be an increase in the renal blood flow. Thus, the blood that is reaching the nephron will also increase, right? That is, there will be an increased GFR and there will be an increased peritubular hydrostatic pressure. So, when the BP is more, renal blood flow is more and there will be an increased glomerular filtration rate and an increased peritubular hydrostatic pressure. Both of this will cause an increased water and sodium loss. That is, there will be increased excretion of sodium and water so that the blood volume will decrease and the BP will return to normal. So, this is meant by pressure diuresis and pressure natriuresis. Diuresis means removal of water or excretion of water and natriuresis means removal of sodium through urine is called natriuresis. So, this is the first mechanism of long term regulation. Next mechanism is renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. So, what is renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism? See, when there is a drop in the blood pressure, that will be detected by the juxtaglomerular apparatus present in the kidneys, right? And the juxtaglomerular apparatus will produce a hormone which is called renin. And this renin can convert the angiotensinogen which is produced by the liver to angiotensin 1. And the angiotensin converting enzyme which is produced by the lungs can convert this angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Now, angiotensin 2 is the main key player in this renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. Okay, so we will see how. Angiotensin 2 has got multiple mechanisms. Okay, so the first mechanism is angiotensin 2 can cause release of aldosterone from the adrenal glands. And aldosterone in turn can increase sodium and water reabsorption thereby increasing the blood volume. Okay. So, the first mechanism is angiotensin 2 can cause release of aldosterone from the adrenal glands and thereby cause sodium and water reabsorption. The next action of angiotensin 2 is that it can induce thirst and also it can induce the release of ADH that is antidiuretic hormone from the pituitary. So, the, both of this will cause the because of the thirst the person will drink more water and ADH release also will cause an increase in blood volume. So basically by release of aldosterone by stimulating the thirst and due to the release of antidiuretic hormone the blood volume will be increased thereby increasing the blood pressure to normal. Now the next mechanism of angiotensin 2 is that it can cause a sympathetic stimulation which in turn can cause an increased blood pressure and also it can cause vasoconstriction. So these two mechanisms also will act together to produce an increase in BP. Thus, the drop in BP can be brought back to normal because of these actions of angiotensin 2, right? So, this is how the angiotensin 2 or the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone mechanism will regulate the blood pressure. So, what will happen if there is an increase in BP? If there is an increase in BP, the juxtaglomerular apparatus will not produce renin. Thus, all these angiotensin 2 will not be produced, okay? But when there is a drop in BP, renin will be produced and will convert angiotensinogen to angiotensin and, thereby, and thereby to angiotensin 2 and angiotensin 2 will produce all these effects. So, I hope this concept is clear. Next, we will just mention some applied aspects also. So, we know that if this regulation of BP is not proper, it can lead on to hypertension. So, the management of, of hypertension is also an important exam question. So, I will just explain that concept also with this flowchart. So, the first mechanism by which we can reduce BP in hypertension, hypertensive people is first to decrease this vasoconstriction. So, to decrease this vasoconstriction, you can give calcium channel blockers so that the smooth muscle constriction can be decreased. So, that is one mechanism by which we can reduce the increased blood pressure. The second mechanism is you can decrease that sympathetic stimulation by giving beta blockers. So, beta blockers will act to decrease the sympathetic stimulation so that the blood pressure can be brought to normal. 
the third mechanism is by giving diuretics see we know diuretics are substances that cause increased excretion of water so when water is lost from the body it will cause a decrease in blood volume and thereby it can cause a decrease in blood pressure so diuretics are the next line of drugs that can be given to decrease the blood pressure and finally we can we can decrease the uh, amount of production of angiotensin 2 by giving ACE inhibitors that is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors so that angiotensin 2 will not be formed and thus all these actions can be prevented. So this is uh, just an outline of how hypertension can be ma managed based on this flowchart. So in a nutshell when a question on long term regulation is asked you can start with an introduction we should include what BP is and what are in general the three mechanisms of regulation that is short term intermediate and long term. And then you can go on to explain the pressure diuresis and pressure natriuresis as well as the renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism. As a clinical application, you can also write the various antihypertensive drugs and the mechanism. So I hope this concept is clear. Thank you.